investigate until the truth is found. I'm skeptical about conspiracy theories, but wow, this has me thinking. We all know what happened. What could have triggered so many people to come together and ask, what truly happened in Lahaina, Maui on August 8th, 2023? What is happening in Maui is no mistake. The Maui fires have joined the list of the deadliest wildfires in U.S. history. It's one thing to watch the videos. It's another to actually see it with your own two eyes. I feel like I'm looking at a war zone. You could feel the heat off the traffic. It sounded like a giant blowtorch and you're running from that. And we had to run in the ocean because we were starting on fire. Yet what occurred in early August wasn't just about vacations cut short. We landed here yesterday and all we have is the clothes on our back, so we don't know what is going to happen next. But a way of life reduced to ashes. And everything I basically, you know, have in the world at this point might be gone. And a community forever changed. How as a parent are you ever prepared to tell your children that their friend didn't make it? But is recovery for the people of Maui still possible? Maui is coming in strong. Maui is coming together. Or are people who had something to gain from the fires? It caused fires in not only on Maui, but it caused fires in the most precious parts of real estate. Standing in the way. I just wanted to come on here and say, do not believe what is being told on the news. And we're just asking, why, why is our town burnt down? Why are our families' houses gone? And if you can explain that to us in a logical, reasonable way, we'll accept it. But right now, there is no explanation. Politicians have not been tar and feathered in a long time, and it shows. It's, it's almost like we're in a, in a prison camp or something. You need his permission. I need someone's permission to film in public. Do I need yours too? How many children are missing? You know. I'm you the answer to that. I'm telling you, the more you look at this, the more dodgy it gets. After all, why are some residents fearing for their lives as they share footage with the world? I'm beginning to worry for my own safety. I'm beginning to worry for my family's safety. I have uploaded this content to a very close friend. So if anything does happen to me, the story should get out that way. Let's unpack what happened in Maui. The media isn't doing us any good at all. We are not okay and listen closely to what Maui residents have made public. Nobody called us. Our phones didn't work from five in the morning. 10 o'clock when I went to work, the fire was still there. There was no water. Tell me if that's a coincidence. Welcome to Lahaina, Maui a town once defined by its sprawling beaches and mountains, now the picture of Paradise Lost. Are you guys believing that? Oh my gosh. It's, it's like nothing I've ever seen before, and I, I've seen many, many wildfires. Sometimes I just like go to the corner and think about like what the old Lahaina town used to look like, and I just start crying. Homes and buildings decimated to ash. There's a house. Everything is gone. What once was a colorful stretch of gorgeous 19th century architecture is no more. A smoky landscape, the ruins of beautiful historic Lahaina. This used to be dad's room over here. And then my room in here. It seems a lot smaller without walls. Interesting. Vehicles melted to the mechanical bone. This fire was absolutely devastating. It burned everything. There's aluminum and glass melted everywhere in the street. And scorched palm trees all bare as reminders of what Lahaina once was and how it was so suddenly transformed. On the afternoon of August 8th, a brush fire emboldened by forceful gusts of wind courtesy of Hurricane Dora. I've never seen any wind that strong in my life, ever engulfed Lahaina in smoke. There is a huge amount of black smoke that is, is just blowing out to sea here. And then flames. Just go, go people, go! As residents watched, stunned. After all, there have been no emergency text alert, no siren, no evacuation order, no anything to inform the community harm had been heading their way. And according to the New York Times, this meant while some residents took their cues to pack, Others cluelessly went about their beach days as tourists continued to arrive from the airport to the already burning island. In fact, it wasn't until 4.17 p.m. that an emergency alert went out, informing residents they had to evacuate the island. 
and by then, road closures and no ability to contact emergency services made escaping from the town nearly impossible. 911 is down, um, cell service is down, um, phone service is down. Instead, many residents and tourists covered in soot abandoned the inferno of gridlock traffic and collapsing buildings for the closest point of refuge. What I'm told is uh, over 100 people, according to the Coast Guard, jumped in the water right around here. With some jumping into a pool, many at the seawall and others doing their best to keep their heads above the ocean surface as the waves crashed against them, individuals, families, and children held their shirts to their mouths to avoid inhaling the smoke that surrounded them. My co-workers, friends, family have lost everything. Fighting the water, getting pulled out, flames were hitting you still. Things were falling from the palm tree on fire on you. By night, the town had been ravaged. Here's the fire damage map of Lahaina. It's just literally in the heart of the fire. Burn all the way around me, about a mile and a half to two miles in every direction. Up, down, left, right. Oh, so heavy, bro. And tallying what was lost also meant tallying who was lost, as not everyone escaped the fire alive. We lost uh, our house, which seems pretty minor uh, compared to what, what everyone else lost. I can't imagine what some people have gone through during the last minutes. The car smashed in on itself. I heard stories that people would just see um, families huddled together and it said it looks like it's Pompeii. They're just calcified, frozen in time. But while rescues were conducted by torched land. So right now we're getting trained on how to do the search and rescue down here in Lahaina with the equipment. What we're doing is removing the metal on the top so the dogs can get in and search for, for human remains. They can't sniff anything because there's so much metal and stuff on top. They gotta be able to get underneath it. So we're pulling stuff off of it to get down to the bottom. Could be people trapped under there, we, we don't know. And Smoky C. As we look at it here, you can see that people had no place to go other than the water or the one road out of town. I mean, they were trapped. Sorry, sorry. sorry. As the search approaches its end, the number of lives lost to the fire remains unknown. Currently, the toll stands at 115. But the number of those missing provided by the FBI suggests this number is much higher. As of today, uh, it's uh, between 1 and 1, 1,000 and 1,100. And unfortunately, due to the weather on the day of the fire, a number of those unaccounted for are children. Schools were in that day. It was so windy that a lot of these were for children at home. The aftermath forced residents into heartbreaking situations. All of us are They're putting us in 30 day, like hotel stays in order to find everybody houses. But in a place where it's hard enough to find housing and hard enough to find jobs as it is, now that there is more people looking for jobs and there is less houses available on the island, everybody's But in their grief, the residents of Maui couldn't help feeling let down by America's response to the tragedy. According to Brian Stern, the founder of the search and rescue donor-funded organization Project Dynamo that arrived in Maui within 20 hours of the fire starting, in the Lahaina people's time of crisis, the United States government had all but deserted the tourist hotspot. We didn't see any military aircraft flying. Our whole time there, we didn't really see a Black Hawk or a Chinook bringing things or people. And while the Department of Defense reported that the National Guard had dropped over a thousand gallons of water over Maui the day after the fire and sent the National Guard along with two Chinook helicopters to the island by August 10th. And you're and your National Guard? Or National Guard. Okay, thank you, thank you. For many, this was too little too late. Do you think that more people would have lived if, if response was quicker? That, just logic tells me that's the case. And residents wanted to know where was the person who was meant to lead them during this time? Where is our leadership? Where is Joe Biden? Where is the president of the United States when you have one of the most devastating fires to occur in the last 100 years? There is this grand sense of community here. I have never seen so many people come together in 
give up their own beds for people that just lost their house in a, but that's the problem. It's that nobody else is doing anything. Nobody is helping. It wasn't until August 21st, 13 days after the fire, that President Biden landed in Maui to survey the damage. And the welcome he received wasn't exactly warm. A bunch of them are protesting. They have their makeshift signs, cardboard signs. A lot of them saying, as we've been talking about, that uh, he's too late. Wow, he's finally here. <laughs> wow, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, thanks for nothing. You, you, you. And giving survivors a one-time check of $700, commenting that the ground was hot in Maui, being accused of nodding off during memorial service, and refusing to comment on the lives lost to the fire. Any comments on the rising death toll didn't seem to win the president many fans. In fact, residents were furious with the lack of support. So today, I haven't had any money come in. I haven't had anybody call me back. I didn't have anything. I, I have no idea. I lost my house. I lost my car. I lost my animals. The $700 compared to all the millions he's giving to Ukraine. Why? We need it. Where's our government? Why did you run if you're not going to step up to the, to the plate when we need you the most? But it wasn't just America's leader that struck Maui residents as insensitive, but tourists. See, while evacuations had turned Maui's attractions into ghost towns, it wasn't long before visitors repopulated the island's waters, to the disbelief of a community still in mourning. Same we, we, waters that our people just three days ago are the same waters the very next day these visitors, uh, tourists, were swimming in. There's the Hawaii we're living in and the Hawaii they're living in, they're visiting in. There are also tourists already asking for discounts on hotel rooms. They're saying they want $20 hotel rooms because of the situation here with all of the fires. Hawaii is not part of the United States. It's occupied land. They literally, at gunpoint, force the queen to sign a treaty. So you, if you're an American, don't get the right to go. And according to Maui residents, these tourists weren't just apathetic to the tragedy, they were vulturous. There are people, rich people, already trying to buy the land that's still in ashes, that has families who passed away, still in the rubble. The Lahaina community was being warned that real estate agents have been approaching those who lost their homes and offering to buy their properties. Please do not leave. Please don't leave Hawaii. Stay on Maui. Don't sell your land. Don't sign any insurance stuff that you're, you're not sure about, but just please stay. Like what makes Lahaina Lahaina is us. Local people make Lahaina Lahaina. I had another friend reach out who's in Maui and was telling me that the victims are being told by their insurance companies that their properties that burned were actually violating city code and will not be rebuilt. So an act of war, an act of nature, whatever it may be that took place in this area is now violating city code and their insurance company is deciding not to cover it. I am so frustrated with investors and realtors calling the families who lost their home, offering to buy their land. How dare you do that to our community right now? If you are a Maui realtor contributing to that, karma's gonna come and get you. This tactic of companies and businesses capitalizing on the disorienting nature of tragedy is called disaster capitalism and it's been used in countless other devastations, including in New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina in 2005 and Puerto Rico after Hurricane Maria in 2017. But according to certain members of the internet, what happened in Maui was different from these other tragedies in one key way. It had allegedly been planned. As for how a fire of this magnitude can be orchestrated, there was one conspiracy pervading the internet. But first, what was the official cause of the fire? Well, while Lahaina roughly translates to cruel sun, it wasn't extreme heat that caused the wildfires that have ravaged the town, but wind and some flimsy power lines. 
On August 7th at 10.47 p.m., Senior Research Coordinator at the Maui Conservation Center, Jennifer Pripple, caught a flash on her surveillance footage coming from the forest. It's windy and then there's a flash and I think that's when a tree is falling on a power line. The power goes out. And unfortunately, the ground of Maui offered the perfect environment for flames to grow. Much of the grass in Maui is a non-native guinea grass that grows really fast. Even if it rains, the hot weather dries it right up. That's pure fuel for fire. But this was only the first incident of a downed line. Let's see how long this pole's gonna hang in. After sunrise on August 8th, another fire started near Lahaina Luna Road after a power line collapsed and began a brush fire that quickly spread to neighboring lawns. And while firefighters claimed the fire was 100% contained that morning, it flared up again in the afternoon. In response, the Lahaina Bypass was closed at 3.30 p.m., meaning now there was only one in and out road to leave the town. Yet, according to social media, this explanation didn't suffice. Some claimed a fire started by a power line didn't account for the way some houses had been left unscathed, while others were reduced to rubble. Somehow we made it. Or why some grass survived next to the fire. Grass over it is still standing. It's not even burned. So even down below, directly below this, you can see some wood fence posts that were burned. But you can see all that grass is still good. So how do you get this car this hot? Or how the fire seemed to skip over a four-lane highway. Or why, in heat that melted glass and aluminum, certain items that should have been destroyed weren't. Many were disturbed by the footage of the aftermath, as many shared their confusion. Why are the guardrails okay and intact? Firefighter for over 20 years, I've seen fires hot enough to melt metal, but there would not have been anything else standing around at those temps. What's interesting is it did all that damage, but asphalt melts a little under 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and all the paint is still intact. However, those who'd experienced wildfires in other locations claimed the damage the fire had done wasn't unusual. I'm in Canada, and we have a terrible wildfire in our Northwest Territories, and people's cars are melting as they are driving out. Google it. Um, you must not have seen any of the wildfires we have here in California. Embers fly, especially at 60 miles per hour. Fire jumped 10-lane highway in mainland two years ago. Extreme weather also provided an answer for some other peculiarities of the fire. Well, I'm wondering if everyone in the cars had to get out and run, why aren't any of the doors open, right? And the comment section was quick to respond. Maybe the 80 miles per hour winds? Still, there were some things that just seemed odd. Like the red roof house that went viral for its pristine post-fire condition. The homeowner acknowledged their house is made of wood, but theorized their home may have survived due to their metal roof, lack of foliage on the property, and being bordered by the ocean. Yet, from videos circulating of Maui, viewers couldn't deny there was a trend. The color blue. I went through hours of footage, and it was pretty interesting what I found. Here are the famous umbrellas. These are actually Tommy Bahama umbrellas. And I have pictures of these before the fire, so you can see what they actually used to look like. Not very different now. And then the sole surviving car on Front Street in front of the outlet mall. Why were certain blue items left untouched by the fire? And why was the internet claiming the same color became a trend among celebrities living in Maui back in October 2022? What the heck are celebs all painting their Maui properties the same weird shade of blue? Not just any blue, mind you, but an exact shade. According to this viral theory, the choice isn't purely aesthetic. Let's delve into the science of lasers, or as they're ominously termed, dews. Did you know that there are two sites in the U.S. that have these directed energy weapons? One is Nevada and the other is Maui. Here's the science. Certain energy rays interact differently with various colors on the spectrum. Some colors are more resistant or reflective, protecting underlying materials from harm. Let's start with this directed energy Air Force Maui optical and supercomputing AMOS site located on the island of Maui. May I quote from the website? Listen to this. Directed energy harnesses the power of the electromagnetic spectrum to enable airmen to effectively and affordably strike critical targets at the speed of light. Is there a connection between this specific royal blue shade, possibly dubbed the Mother Mary Blue, and the dudes? Could Lahaina celebrities have insider knowledge? 
Twitter provided additional context and community notes that the article this rumor was based on appears to be an architectural digest piece with a different headline, where blue paint jobs are never mentioned, and viewers noted it seems celebrities actually hadn't painted their houses blue. However, when a TikTok user tested this theory, it appeared blue lasers were less effective on blue objects. There was even an episode of Rick and Morty on the durability of a pair of blue jeans that some believed highlighted this color's special powers. The NX-5 destroys the whole planet except for the Wrangler jeans. Because they're so tough. Tougher than the laser? Stupid. NX-5 corporate sponsor detected. Cannot penetrate Wranglers. Built too tough. Built too tough. Still, why would a color that protects against lasers hold up against fires? Unless, according to a portion of social media, the Maui fires hadn't been caused by downed power lines, but a laser. But where was the supposed laser that had done this? Well, again, an animated sitcom proved to be of use to the internet. Can someone walk up to those umbrellas and open them? Here's why. This is the Simpson episode when the laser burnt down their town, and in the middle of the town is a blue wrapped statue. I haven't seen the entire episode, but apparently in the beginning, that's where the laser was coming from. The blue tarp apparently stopped it. I mean, obviously it's some sort of electronic device. You fool. You erected a massive concave reflective surface. It will focus the sun's beam in a deadly ray. <laughs> But this episode of the oddly prophetic show offered another theory as to where the laser was, as some users pointed out the statue in The Simpsons looked similar to the one erected in Liliuokalani Park in 2021. One viewer rejoiced at the discovery, commenting, One day soon, the world's populace will have had enough of the games and demand answers. Others, however, questioned how a statue on a different island could send a laser beam through or over mountains and volcanoes to hit Lahaina. Or, as one viewer put it, they think a cartoon is predicting the future. We can't expect them to be good with geography. Still, some were intrigued by Blue's supposed protective capabilities. As some people commented, I am painting all my stuff blue, my new favorite color. Cool, I'm going Mediterranean blue. But was it possible businesses were already preventing the public from harnessing this color's powers? According to one TikTok user, Rona had discontinued blue tarps. Protect yourself now. September 23rd is around the corner, the TikTok user captioned their post. Why September 23rd? asked one viewer. The TikTok user replied with a theory. Florida and LA will be underwater, I believe. Another viewer said they'd received the same date for a storm from an alleged time traveler. And various TikTokers were sharing snippets of media mentioning September 23rd or or 2023. Go ahead. Tell yourself it's just a number. The miracle of deliverance. By 923, the water of life shall proceed forth from the throne of the Lamb. But how a laser would create a storm wasn't brought up. Yet, laser or no laser, the devastation in Maui had been tied to another theory. Smart cities, 15-minute cities, and satellite cities. Question. Why Maui? Answer. It's a new smart grid in Hawaii dubbed the, quote, Jump Smart Maui Project. This is disaster capitalism of $5 billion are coming to Maui and sticky fingers are here to take it all and develop everything without any, without any input. Lahaina needs to decide what happens in Lahaina. According to USA Today, a 15-minute city is a concept for urban planning where all essential services are within a 15-minute walk, while a smart city is based on making a location more efficient through technology, while satellite cities are smaller cities that are closer to a large metropolitan area. A Maui resident even accused prominent figures who own property in Maui of allegedly aiming to create a satellite city. Everybody talking about the satellite city before the fire. Lahaina gonna be the first satellite city. Well, hey, Jeff Bezos, you got what you wanted. Oprah, you got what you wanted. And the guy who owns the nut, you got what you wanted. F it's all over. That's what happened. People specifically focused on Oprah Winfrey's behavior, calling attention four months prior to the wildfires, when she purchased 870 acres of land in Maui for $6.6 .6 million. According to a report from KITV4, Oprah already owned over 100 acres of Maui land, and with her recent purchase, she allegedly owns roughly 1,000 acres on the island. There are also no reports of any of Oprah's land or Maui residences being affected by the fire. Do you think that it's a coincidence that Oprah bought these lands and these fires naturally happen? Or do it make more sense that 
Oprah bought this land and these fires intentionally was done. Despite hand delivering supplies to an emergency shelter in Maui, the internet wasn't convinced Oprah's efforts were genuine. She's about to take that land. These rich people are evil. All her money, she brought pillows. Oprah Winfrey's so-called generosity has always come with strings attached, definitely not straight from the heart. Showing up with her CBS camera crew spoke volumes. In fact, videos are going viral criticizing Oprah and her fellow multi-millionaire friend, The Rock, for setting up a donation fund. And so we have created the People's Fund of Maui that will put money directly in the hands of the people who need it right now. As Oprah was saying, it is a clean, direct, from you. Oprah and The Rock, what in the flying f was that video that you guys made? This is why people call celebrities out of touch. Did the richest woman in the world just ask us for money? <laughs> why can't you reach into your $2 billion net worth and say, you get relief, you get relief, you get relief. Instead, you down here asking me for money. Back to school just started and we as parents are wiped out. Half of us just got our job back since COVID. You're so concerned about Maui that instead of taking what would amount to a year's salary for you and four or five of your billionaire friends, which could be used to rebuild the entire place in a matter of months, you're jumping on social media and asking the American public, most of whom can't afford to pay their rent right now, to do it for you. Oprah, read the room. While residents and supporters around the world have their doubts, a representative of the Maui Economic Development Board told USA Today that they are not aware of any plans to turn Maui into a smart island or a 15-minute city. And despite Hawaii Governor Josh Green's recent signing of an emergency proclamation that made unsolicited offers from real estate agents a crime punishable by up to one year in jail and a fine of $5,000, previous reports of land grabs happening in Maui have fostered fears amongst residents over the future of the island. Realtors People in the real estate industry are calling your family and your friends who have lost everything to, to buy their plots of land. It is disgusting. We have real estate investors and speculators going around calling our victims, offering to give them cash and buy their property. I just saw this morning, just now on TikTok, that they are giving eviction notices to people whose houses have been burned down. The Maui Tenants Association has a hotline. We've been receiving call after call of people who are being asked to be evicted by their landlords. The landlords who have the gumption and the gall, the nerve, and the lack of empathy to push evictions on their tenants right now do not care. My friend who lost her home, her family, her job, literally everything in the fire, the only kind of um, assistance that has been offered is a loan. Not a donation, a loan. There are plenty of ways to make money in real estate investing without being a total f piece of there are plenty of ways. Work harder, do better. But while theories of the creation of a smart city remain unproven, complaints over the way the fire was handled have mounted. See, Hawaii's top emergency officials were not on the island at the time of the fire, but at FEMA's annual disaster meeting in Oahu, navigating hypothetical disasters while their people faced the real deal. As previously mentioned, no sirens went off to alert the public and Maui County Emergency Management Agency Administrator Herman Andaya stood by his decision not to sound the alarms. The sirens, as I mentioned earlier, is used primarily for tsunamis. The public is trained to seek higher ground in the event that the siren is sounded. In fact, we're afraid that people would have gone Malka. And if that was the case, then they would have gone into the fire. However, according to the Maui County website, along with tsunamis, these sirens are also used for other emergencies, including hurricanes, terrorist threats, and wildfires. And amid growing criticism over Maui's lack of response, they innocent men, women, and children by not helping, by not sounding alarms. People were asleep in their homes with their babies and their children. The head of the Maui Emergency Management Agency resigned. But it wasn't just a failure to warn residents of the incoming flames that left the community of Lahaina high and dry. According to the New York Times, firefighters who rushed onto the scene on August 8th were met with a nightmare scenario as the water coming from their hoses began to sputter. The town's water system had collapsed, making fighting the fire next to impossible. According to Hawaii's Director of Water Supply, John Stuffelbean, this occurred after the fire had blazed through homes, leading to leaking pipes that depressurized the network that supplies the hydrants. 
But if no sirens, no water, and no internet or cell service left Maui in the dark during the fire, it appeared the lights still hadn't been turned on. The Lahaina community was adamant that the true number of lives lost to the fire was still being grossly misrepresented to the public. It's not, it's not correct. They're not reporting it correctly. I don't know why they're not reporting it correctly. There's hundreds, if like, at least 600, if not thousands of people who are dead in the streets, in floating in the ocean. And it seemed the same lack of coverage had prevented the public from understanding the current circumstances for those living in Lahaina. I think there, there's a lot going on here that is way beyond anything that anybody wants to believe. Yeah. Jeff Cygnus, a TikToker and self-proclaimed volunteer reporter, captured life inside Maui post-fire, where it seemed liberties were continually being stripped away from residents as the use of drones and travel became prohibited while access to fuel was controlled by the government. Even if the situation wasn't that we needed special permission slips to come back to our home, even then, we didn't have enough fuel to leave West Maui. Why can we not get some information? Why can we not leave? Why can't, uh, why aren't they making any efforts to get the gas stations working? One viewer commented, I feel like the last three plus years has been one big social experiment. Another theorized, it's about control. And when fences were built to supposedly protect residents from debris, many were suspicious. There seems to be a huge emphasis on ensuring that the media and anyone else can't see what's going on here in Lahaina, West Maui. There are miles and miles of this black fence going up that was not here before. Still, the Lahaina community was eventually given access to unrestricted travel through permission slips they had to line up in order to receive. As many cards as we can issue today, we will go ahead and do so. Viewers shared their concern. Why do they need permission slips to go freely on their own land? This feels like they're using this as a test. But if this was a test, it seemed the public wouldn't be given a chance to pass. Hey, I've just been informed that we are shutting down this black distribution as of now. The hopes of thousands of residents were dashed when it was announced they would not be receiving permission slips, and even the police officer didn't have a good answer. Jeff, for one, was frustrated. So we're supposed to drink the water you give us, eat the food you give us, use the medication you have available, and we're stuck here. But while his in-person critiques of the way the government was handling the crisis weren't always well received. This is actually illegal, you know. I think you have to get his consent to Yeah, I, yeah. yeah this is this not a public place that we're on right now? Yeah. It was his online post that exposed what was happening in Maui that Jeff claimed had made him some powerful enemies. I'm beginning to worry for my own safety. I'm beginning to worry for my family's safety. And so I want to speak directly to the powers that be. And, uh, you know, if, if you watch my other content, you will know what I mean by that. Nobody knows exactly who these people are, but we know that they exist. And according to Jeff, these powers that be wanted him silenced, possibly for good. I have uploaded this content to a very close friend who is far away in an undisclosed location. And I've also provided them with the credentials to all of my social media. So if anything does happen to me, the story should get out that way. And Jeff wasn't the only one facing surreal situations. Investigative reporter Nick Sorter alleged unknown actors are stalking independent reporters and caught one on camera during his report. He alleged this man showed up at his hotel at 5.45 a.m. People's minds here. Hey, what's up, Nick? I've been trying to reach you. I've been reaching out to you on X. Um, We're supposed to be uh, meeting with people here. Who, what victim have you uh, Okay, yeah. So this is, this is, so you're seeing this live right now. People actually track, they yeah. tracked me down. I and you were staying in a tent. You said you were coming and staying in a tent, Nick. Uh, resources. I'm not it's taking up here. any resources here. Nick was also handled with force when he questioned the mayor of Maui about the missing children. Oh, it's the department, you. okay? The, the press show is over. Okay? Right, so he's not gonna ask. He's not gonna answer he's my done. questions. Okay, and what's my crime? You're literally pushing the me. press conference is I over. I don't care. If the press conference is over. Get out of the way. I'm sorry.
right, so it's our 110 cadavers, but we can't sir, give them we can't some room, identify. Please. We can't identify how many of them are children. In fact, the mayor's refusal to answer questions about Maui children. Their children have been found, and there's any, any hesitance to announce that, because that'll obviously just do a different level of heartbreak. I don't know. I would guess you are Paired with reports of school being canceled in Lahaina before the fire sparked more conspiracies of alleged planned endings to prevent inheriting family properties, alleged sacrifices, or alleged trafficking. One TikToker compared Maui footage before and after the fire, revealing there were many missing school buses, calling into question whether students were really taken home on August 8th. However, several schools announced students were not planned to be on campus that day due to heavy winds, making it unclear if students left their home at all. Conspiracy or not, the number of children who did not enroll in school is concerning. An August 24th report from the State of Hawaii Department of Education revealed that number to be 2,025 students. It's unclear whether these children have passed away, moved out of state, or enrolled in private schools. And while the FBI urges Maui residents to submit DNA samples to help identify victims, fire experts fear the extreme heat from the wildfires may have destroyed DNA in the remains. Despite the theories and aftereffects of tragedy Lahaina residents are currently facing, it seems some accountability might be forthcoming. On Thursday, August 24th, Maui County officials filed a lawsuit against Hawaiian Electric that accused the utility of not disconnecting power lines that were at risk of falling in high winds and not performing maintenance in the years leading up to the storm, a failure described as intentional and malicious. Defendants knew of the extreme fire danger that the high wind gusts posed to their overhead electrical infrastructure, particularly during red flag conditions, read the suit. Still, they made the decision not to de-energize their power lines. Since the filing of the suit, Hawaiian Electric has taken responsibility for the first fire. However, the utility company claimed the second fire started after the power was shut off and was therefore another group's fault. Hawaiian Electric faulted county firefighters for declaring the blaze contained and leaving the scene only to have a second wildfire break out nearby and become the deadliest in the United States in more than a century. But as the blame game, conspiracies, and backlash rages on, so do the fires that continue to crop up in Maui. You've lost your jobs because your business is gone, so hi. Um, I've got to go. I have staff members that are in Kahanapali and they need to be evacuated. So as the community struggles to regain normalcy amid continuous disasters and growing restrictions that limit their movements, access, and rights, what can the public do to help? Well, while traveling to Maui remains a physical impossibility for most, sending supplies to a specific address can be just as beneficial for struggling households, especially when you go with the services that will deliver those goods the fastest. USPS is going to be the slowest. They're the most delayed right now. FedEx and UPS are almost caught up with deliveries. So if you want to send packages to your loved ones, who needs supplies, you can start sending supplies their way. Donations are another way non-residents can make an impact, as the Maui Food Bank, the Maui Humane Society, and other charities work to make sure the donations have the most impact. Is Lahaina Ohana Venmo. They are constantly updating the page with families who are adding their Venmos, so you can click the notification bell there, and that'll keep you updated with new families that are coming in and needing donations. It's these small acts of compassion that can brighten Maui's aloha spirit, a harmonious mindset that, despite recent hard times, shows no signs of dimming. In fact, the people of Lahaina have continued to show the strength of their community, whether that's through a biker group handing out fuel, or businesses, charities, and locals coming together to give what they can. There's people here barbecuing, they're giving out uh, burritos and tacos and meat and uh, hot dogs and all sorts of things. The community is intent on rebuilding what they had, even if they're working with ashes. We are going to need help. And we're going to come together and just piece by piece, you know, like put it back. Whether you believe a power line, a laser, or a monumental governmental failure was behind the Maui fires, it's clear the life and the land that once belonged to Maui residents are now at stake. Lahaina is not for sale. Um, please don't reach out to these families and take advantage of them during the most devastating time of our lives. I know it's going to be really, really hard, but we need to do everything in our power to keep Hawaiian land in Hawaiian hands. Yet, despite everything the people of Lahaina have been through, there's still hope to be found. 
In Hawaiian, we say holomua. We move forward. There's no looking back. We can't do anything. We must just carry on and move forward. It's there in the way the people pulled together to survive. And I believe this community effort saved a lot of the homes here. It's there in a famous 150-year-old banyan tree known as the heartbeat of Lahaina that, against all odds, is still hanging on. We've been told by the governor, in fact, that it's burned, it's scorched, it's wounded, but still breathing, as he put it. It's there in something as simple as a rainbow. So even after the whole city has been decimated, you still got the rainbow. This is the story of the Maui fires and a community that, in the face of immense loss, remains resilient.